Have you ever checked a weather app that said 99% chance of sun, only to get caught in a downpour? That feeling of being really wrong, not just a little bit wrong, is the core idea behind cross-entropy. In the world of AI and machine learning, we need a way to measure how wrong a model's prediction is. But more than that, we need to penalize the model more when it is confidently wrong. And that is exactly what cross-entropy does, it is one of the most important concepts in classification. At its heart, cross-entropy measures the difference between two probability distributions, let's call them P and Q. P is the true distribution, this is the ground truth, the reality. In our weather example on that rainy day, the true distribution was 100% rain, 0% sun. Q is our model's predicted distribution, this is what our AI thinks is the truth. The weather app predicted a 1% chance of rain and a 99% chance of sun. The goal of training a model is to make its prediction Q as close as possible to the truth P. This looks a bit scary but let us break it down, it is simpler than it looks. Sigma, this just means sum up for every possible outcome. In our case, the outcomes are rain and sun. P of X is the true probability of an outcome. Since we know the truth, we only end up caring about the term for the correct event. Log of Q of X is the logarithm of our model's predicted probability for that outcome. This is the part that does all the work. Look at the graph of the logarithm. If your model predicts a high probability for the correct event, the log value is a small negative number. But if it predicts a very low probability, the log value is a large negative number. It heads towards negative infinity. This is our penalty mechanism. A terrible prediction gets a massive penalty score. The negative sign at the front just flips these negative values to be positive, so we can treat it as a cost or loss. Let us calculate the cross entropy. We sum over our two events, rain and sun. See how the P of sun term being zero cancels out the entire second part. We only need to worry about the event that actually happened. The final cross entropy loss is 4.6, a high number indicating a bad prediction. Now what if our model was better? Let us say it predicted a 70% chance of rain. The new calculation gives us a loss of 0.36, a much better result. A lower cross entropy means our model's prediction is closer to the truth. The goal of training is to minimize this value. So where do we use this everywhere in classification? When you train a model to tell cats from dogs you use cross entropy. You use cross entropy as your loss function, it is often called log loss. The model starts by making random guesses. We show it a picture of a cat where the truth is cat equals 1 and dog equals 0. We calculate the cross entropy loss. This loss tells the model how to adjust its internal weights to make a better prediction next time. An algorithm like gradient descent follows the loss downhill, constantly tweaking the model to reduce the cross entropy. Over thousands of examples, the model learns to produce predictions that are very close to the true distribution P. So let us recap, cross entropy measures the distance between the true probabilities P and your model's predicted probabilities Q. It heavily penalizes models that are very confident but very wrong. A guess of 1% for something that happens is punished much more than a guess of 40%. It is the number one loss function for classification, from simple logistic regression to giant neural networks. The goal is minimization when you hear about training a model, it often means minimizing the cross entropy loss. So the next time your weather app is confidently wrong, you can think of it as having a very high cross entropy loss. If this video helped you understand cross entropy, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Blackboard AI for more simple explanations of complex topics.